Welcome everyone. I hope you're having a great build. I'm Lee Stott. I'll be your moderator for this session. Dimitris, Dimitris Mishov will be presented on a topic called Cognitive Services for Photo Exploration and Science Art. But before we start, I want to let you know that we'll be hosting a Q&A with the presenter after the session. So please do add your questions to the Q&A section. Please pay attention to the Microsoft Digital Code of Conduct. And we hope you really enjoy this session. So I'd like to now introduce you to Dimitri. Hello, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here today with you. And uh, I will be talking about cognitive services and some interesting usage of cognitive services for exploring photographs, for searching for happiness and for doing science art. Um, let me begin uh, by uh, uh, saying that we will also be uh, trying out Visual Studio Code Spaces to start coding in Python immediately to execute uh, some of the code. And you would be able to do it yourself as well, uh, probably after the session. So to begin with, uh, let me uh, say that uh, in the world today, artificial intelligence becomes more and more important. And with artificial intelligence, uh, you do not create algorithm, but you rather use data to, to teach computer how to do things. And that's why in the modern world, data becomes sometimes more important than algorithms. For example, if you want to create a system which will create, which will estimate the average age of people which uh, visit a conference, for example, uh, from the video stream, you would need uh, to train the model to determine people's age from the photograph. And to do that, you definitely need a lot of data. And uh, big companies such as Microsoft, they have this data. And that's why uh, they can uh, create uh, pre-trained models to solve typical tasks. And those models, uh, uh, that is exactly what is called cognitive services. So cognitive services, they are like building blocks in the cloud, which you can use to solve uh, intelligent tasks, such as understanding natural text, uh, looking for, uh, for, for people and for objects on photographs, uh, or for example, converting text to speech and speech to text, or even translating between different languages. And uh, uh, in cognitive services, uh, they are like building blocks. It's basically a function which you can call and get the result back. Dimitri, we got no audio. Sorry. Uh, um, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we are trying to see the cognitive services, uh, how they work. Um, you can try them out uh, from the web page uh, by uh, trying to by choosing the photograph, and um, um, uh, you can see that uh, the result from cognitive services you receive in this JSON format, which a developer can use um, afterwards. Uh, so the information includes even the textual description of the picture uh, and that looks completely like a magic and to achieve this result you need to train this on the uh, large amount of photographs uh, you can upload your own picture and let me try it on the handwritten drawing of my daughter and even on the drawing the computer recognizes uh, the face and the age it's a little bit inaccurate but um, uh, still it works so it gives you the age and the gender uh, correctly. So uh, uh, here, uh, what we did, we called this cognitive services from the web page, and uh, that's a good way to try it out. But uh, ideally, you definitely would want to call it from the so from the code. And uh, one of the first experiments, uh, the first experiment that we I would like you to do today is to try to see what affects people's happiness. Uh, that always uh, fascinated me: whether people get happier with age or not uh, and the way to find this out we can uh, take a bunch of photographs and since we know that uh, the cognitive service can recognize our age and can recognize uh, our emotions uh, we can just try to extract this data from the photographs and see the result and to do that i have prepared uh, a piece of code on github and you have the link uh, uh, here on the slide and it will be posted also uh, in the chat 
but uh, what's the best way to run this code? This code is written in Python. So of course you can just install the Python on your machine using something like uh, Anaconda or Miniconda, but that would require some effort and you would need to also install all required libraries and so on. Uh, there are much easier ways to run things in the cloud. You can do like virtual machine, but even better, uh, you can use uh, a new feature which has been recently uh, announced, which is called Visual Studio Code Spaces. Visual Studio Code Spaces uh, is the development environment which uh, is in the cloud, so you can uh, uh, create uh, a small virtual machine which uh, you would use only when you are doing actual development and when you are not it would be suspended and you can connect to this virtual machine uh, directly from your favorite editor like Visual Studio Code or Big Visual Studio Client and also from the browser like if you want to code for example while you are on vacation uh, you can also do that by uh, logging in uh, to the code space and that's something I will show you uh, right now and um, the way uh, you can also what you can what you can also do you can code the you can clone the code directly from GitHub when you are creating the code space. Uh, so let's see uh, how it works. I have the repository uh, with the code that I want to show you, and I want to uh, open it up in the Visual Studio Code Spaces. So I copy the URL and then I go to AKMS Code Spaces and select create a new code space. I can type the name of the code space. Uh, and paste the name of the GitHub repository. Uh, then I select the instance time for the virtual machine. The virtual machine, uh, the, the basic virtual machine would be enough for us. And I can click create. And this uh, repository creation takes uh, really little time. And uh, uh, once you are you have done that, you see very familiar interface because it looks exactly like Visual Studio Code. Because Visual Studio Code is in fact web-based editor. So here you can uh, click on the photo analysis APN file, the one we'll be exploring, and open it. Uh, meanwhile, the Visual Studio Code would suggest us to install required extensions like Python extension VS Code. Uh, it's, it gets installed, and here you can start using Python immediately in this environment. Here is my file for photo analysis. It's a Jupyter Notebook, and this Jupyter Notebook is open inside Visual Studio. Uh, Jupyter, uh, you probably know what it is, but it's a good way to combine text and Python code in one document. So here you can navigate uh, and start uh, any cell. If I start uh, any cell in this uh, code space, uh, it suggests me to install the Jupyter because uh, originally the extension, uh, the, the Visual Studio space comes empty without the library. Uh, now I, uh, I have this notebook running inside the code space and I can uh, select different parts of it and I can run it uh, uh, cell by cell. So to start using uh, cognitive services, I need the special key to use them. This key can be obtained from uh, Azure Subscripts. You can create cognitive services source there, or you can request a trial key. To get the trial key, you have the link right here in the notebook. You uh, click here and you are taken to the page where you can uh, get the key and uh, endpoint URL immediately. So if you do that, you just copy uh, uh, that key and paste it here inside the code. You need uh, the key and you need the endpoint, which specifies the server which runs the cognitive service. So now I run the cell uh, and uh, then we need to install some more libraries which we will use. We will use a cognitive service is in face, which is the SDK for cognitive services. And uh, this SDK makes it really easy to use cognitive services. So you just uh, create an object, uh, TLI, a face client, and then you can pass it any URL. Like I can take the URL of this picture uh, somewhere on the internet, and uh, I call detect with URL. Uh, I say that I want to return emotions age gender. Uh, and once I run it, see the result. I have the JSON with all the information, like face attributes, age 39, gender male, and an array of emotions. So then uh, I want uh, to analyze some pictures. I will take uh, a pictures of one of the student events in Russia where you have a lot of uh, uh, faces in the photograph, and they are all located somewhere on the internet in this web album. And after the small uh, investigation, you can find out that all the photos they have very specific URLs for that. 
uh, only the number of pictures differ. So what I can do, I can uh, easily create the whole uh, list of those uh, URLs. It would be like 000.jpg, 001.jpg, and so on. And uh, I create the list of those URLs, and then I run services uh, on each picture uh, in this. Uh, so when I see several faces on the picture, I uh, extract all of them, and I create one line uh, for every face. Uh, it will take uh, some time for the secret time machine to, uh, uh, to speed it up. And I create finally the Pandas data frame. Pandas is a Python library which is used for data analysis. So you see that I end up having this table where each face is specified by one line, uh, which has the uh, happiness, the emotions, the area of emotions, age, uh, gender, and the number of people in the picture. Now I can uh, plot some results. Uh, here is, for example, the histogram of age, and uh, this histogram shows that there are some elder people in this group, probably professors in this event, and then there are a lot of younger people. So we have a representative audience. Uh, we can see how happiness is distributed, and uh, this is the histogram. So it shows how many people had the happiness of zero, had the happiness of one. You see that there are slightly more happy people than neutral. People and there are also a few people where happiness is not clearly visible. It's not like absolute. Uh, that's the way how cognitive service works. It tries to see whether happiness is good, and all the intermediate states they are not uh, easily recognized. Um, so now uh, probably we want to do something more interesting and try to see if there is a relation between happiness and age. So the easiest thing is to put happiness over age. But you can see that this graph doesn't really tell you a lot. It's it's there are a lot of uh, points. Probably you can see that younger people are slightly happier, but that's not obvious. Uh, we need to transform the data somehow. Uh, let's, for example, start by uh, analyzing uh, happiness by gender. So if you group by gender and then average happiness, you can see that uh, females are almost twice happier than males. Let's let's um, think about it. what does it mean. Does it mean really women? Happier, or does it mean that they smile more on camera? Uh, the result is interesting in itself, and I tried it on different data sets and so uh, Then you can uh, see the distribution depending on the number of people on the picture. The more people on the picture, the happier they seem, because when you do the group photographs, you probably smile more. And uh, finally, if I want to, 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 to distinguish between uh, age, I probably would also need to group by age and plot this cumulative graph. And even better, uh, I can group uh, different people into age categories, some, something like from uh, 20 to 30, from 30 to 50, uh, by doing this whole division. And uh, this will give me a much, to see a much better graph, which looks like this. You can clearly see that with age, happiness becomes. Uh, So you can uh, now uh, continue to see some more code in this node. I would uh, go through all of it. Uh, you can uh, also explore your own program. Uh, here in the code space, you can just uh, take a directory and upload uh, some graphs there. And uh, run this code uh, on the graphs of your own. Go to take images uh, from disk and analyze them. So that was uh, the first example of using cognitive services. Now let's do something even more interesting with them. Uh, in addition to happiness, age, and those attributes, cognitive services can also give you back the uh, facial landmarks, the array of uh, uh, typical um, uh, points on the face. And I can use that to lay out photographs in a certain way. Uh, and one of the ideas that I have is called cognitive portrait. Cognitive portrait uh, is using cognitive portrait, cognitive services to create uh, the portraits like that. When you take uh, many photographs of the same uh, person or uh, of multiple people and you overlay them, one 
one on top of the other to create a blended picture like this. And you can create the average portrait of one person. You can create the average uh, portrait of several people by blending them together. And to do that, uh, as I mentioned, we would use uh, two ideas. We would use the idea of uh, facial landmarks and the idea of a fine transformation. A fine transformation is the transformation when we uh, combine uh, rotation, movement, movement of the picture, zooming, uh, and um, it's basically a transformation when parallel lines stay parallel, but you somehow transform the picture and uh, to put it to the right position. This transformation is defined by three points, so I need to specify it, uh, three points and how they would move during this transformation. And I can, for example, take uh, two points. Uh, uh, of the eyes, like uh, left and right pupil, uh, and uh, for example, the middle of the mouth. I can compute this uh, middle point here, and I want I can specify that I want to move those three points to specified position uh, in the target picture, and uh, that would that would uh, be what I need to do. Now let's uh, go uh, from GitHub again. I will start from GitHub repository. This repository contains uh, several notebooks which do different. Uh, ways of creating these portraits. I, in addition to the simple portrait like that, it also contains like uh, interesting layouts, for example, laying out portraits in the circle. And to create, uh, if you want to play with this code and create your own nice way of laying out photographs, please do that and please do pull request to this repository so that uh, 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 so that uh, you, you, we can all see them. So uh, I will skip the beginning of this notebook, um, but I will also uh, open it in the Visual Studio Code instead of the browser. In the Visual Studio Code, you just need to install the extension for workspaces. Then you click on this remote button and you take connect to workspace. Then you select your uh, code space in the cloud. And now I'm my local Visual Studio Code on my local computer. It connects to the cloud and it runs all Python on the cloud. That means you don't have anything Python related installed. Locally. I will skip the beginning of the notebook because it's the same. It's uh, loading libraries and inserting your uh, key. And I will start with this uh, line which actually extracts facial landmark. So here I specify that I want to return face landmark true. And it gives me back the coordinates of uh, all uh, points in this picture. Uh, so now uh, I need some images to play with. And this GitHub repository, I had uh, already provided images with Bill Gates. So there are some photographs of Bill Gates uh, close together with the repository. And if you want to create your portraits, you upload your portraits instead, upload your, port your uh, photographs to a directory. And then let's uh, just try to see how it works. I take the first photograph and I try to overlay facial landmarks on top of the face. It's not really clear visible here. Let me try another photograph here. I will just say the first photograph instead of uh, photograph number zero. And here you probably see better there are red dots on top of the face, which show you how facial landmarks were recognized. And now I just do uh, a simple for loop to go through all the pictures. I need to be on the same site. I take only 13 pictures of all of them, because uh, if you're using a trial version of cognitive services, they can also process 20 pictures a minute. And so, run into the problems of uh, limitation of this limitation, I processed limited number of pictures. So now we extracted uh, all the points for all the pictures, and uh, we can see how uh, some pictures look. Those are the first five pictures from our collection. Now we need to do a fine transformation. So luckily, we use the library called OpenCV, uh, which contains uh, nice functions to do. I specify the coordinates of three points uh, where I want to move left, right, right, right. And middle of the mouth, and then the function for, which is called get a fine transform returns us the transformation which transforms uh, uh, coordinates of my our picture to this target triangle. And then um, with one uh, with the next function called var fine, I can apply the transformation to my image. So after the transformation, my images look like this. You see that uh, I allocate at exactly this position, so all the pictures are aligned together. And the only thing we need to do now is we need to blend them all together. And this can be done very easily with Python because uh, just every uh, images in Python are represented by uh, arrays of numbers. So you can just blend them uh, together. I use slightly more complicated function here, which allows me to assign weights to different weights. 
graphs uh, to, to have some variation so that they can play with different variations and select the best one. So this shows me how to align the first images. You see the first images, they are uh, nice. Even better result you can get if you align all images uh, together into one big. Uh, that would be the final result of our exercise. So you can save the result using this uh, implied tool, uh, and uh, I definitely encourage you to try this out and create your own cognitive portrait as well. You just need to upload your own photographs there and you are done. Run the same code on them, uh, but that would be easy. And the more uh, difficult thing would be uh, to try and uh, create something uh, something more interesting to align pictures in a different way because you what you are doing in fact you are aligning pictures programmatically you can come up with a different interesting ways to do that for example this cognitive portrait of my daughter i took many photographs of her and i uh, aligned them according to her age so on the left she is younger on the right she is older and um, you can see it shows the process of her growing up so it's called growing up and you have already seen the aligning of photographs in the circle. Uh, you can easily experiment and uh, find even more creative ways to do that. Uh, here we use artificial intelligence to help us create uh, photographs, to help us create art. But in fact, uh, you have probably heard that AI can create art itself. And that's a very interesting point because uh, we can use neural networks which would draw the pictures like this. You see the uh, this, those are results of uh, pictures created by a neural network which has been trained on a set of uh, pictures of uh, flowers, uh, of landscapes and of people, of portraits. Um, and you, you can start to think for yourself. I mean, uh, is artificial intelligence actually capable of creating something uh, artistic itself? That's an interesting question. I have the blog post about that uh, and I will not give you the answer because I think nobody knows the right answer, but it's a very interesting uh, direction to think about artificial intelligence in general. And if you want to share this idea of cognitive portrait with your friends, I suppose you can run the code, but you can also share and give them the address of this uh, bot. I have uh, converted this idea into a chatbot, which is kind of a virtual exhibition because uh, now during the lockdown, we cannot go to museum, we cannot experience uh, interactive installations. I had, by the way, an inter interactive installation working at one of the museums in, in Moscow, but now since the museum is closed, you can experience the same thing through the chatbot. You can try this uh, bot, people blender bot in Telegram. You can edit and send it uh, your photograph and your photograph would be blended together with photographs of other people who use this bot. Or you can try to use the same bot from my website, uh, from the page which is listed here. Uh, you just need to send uh, your photograph, but make sure it would also be uh, available to uh, other people as part of the blending experience. Uh, so if you want to learn more, uh, if you want to learn how AI can generate paintings, I have the blog post on that. Uh, I have a blog post uh, discussing whether AI can be creative and how to create this kind of interactive exhibit uh, and chatbot uh, which blends uh, pictures together. Uh, it's a showcase of different interesting Microsoft technologies. So if you want to learn about Asia functions, uh, about how to use Python to write Asia functions, uh, you can uh, read uh, this blog post as well. So uh, I think that concludes my talk. Uh, please uh, uh, don't forget to fill in the survey and now I am ready to answer your questions. Do we have any questions here? Hi Dimitri. Yes, we have a, a number of questions. So lots of interest in Visual Studio Kobe. So first of all, apologies for the audio there, everyone. We do know it's a bit choppy. Um, so apologies over that. So yes, first question is around Visual Studio Code Spaces. Lots of interest. So how do students get started with using Code Spaces? And can you deploy custom environments to your Code Space environment? Uh, definitely. So uh, to use Code Spaces, you need Azure account. And for students, you can create the uh, free Azure account, which would have some uh, amount of uh, money. Actually, uh, um, yeah, the, the link would be provided on the final slide of this talk. Uh, uh, it's a KMS slash Azure for students, and you can sign up for free Azure account uh, and create the Code Space using this account. Uh, keep in mind that uh, Code Spaces, they are really very cheap. So uh, the money that you have in credit, uh, would be enough to enjoy this coding environment for quite a long time. Uh, in, in, in a quick question to creating your own environments, uh, 
code spaces are based on container technology, so you can uh, either provide your own container instance if you want the completely custom environment, uh, or you can uh, provide customization uh, code like requirements txt or startup script, which would be executed when somebody creates the environment. So yes, you can do that. OK, so the next question was around how does a beginner get started in learning more around cognitive services? We've posted links around the MS Learn modules, but what guidance could you give? Uh, I think code uh, the MS Learn modules is definitely a good place to start. But uh, what you can also do, you can just go to the page of cognitive services and for each service uh, it provides uh, sample code right uh, on the cognitive services page. If you dig a little bit there, you can see the sample code in several languages which you can uh, copy and paste and start using immediately. And uh, actually it's very simple. It's uh, uh, as simple as calling a function and getting the results back. Uh, and you can also like try this code which we have uh, uh, shown, which I have shown you today and um, use it as a starting point. So there's another question around how can cognitive services be used in real world examples? So somebody's given an example of a security situation where you want to monitor something. So can you share some uh, experiences or, or understanding of how cognitive services is being used in the real world? Uh, definitely. Cognitive services uh, are created to solve very typical tasks. So in business, uh, there are a lot of tasks which fall under this category when you need to do something uh, quite clear, like uh, do security, recognize people's faces, uh, monitor uh, emotions. And for those situations, cognitive services are a very good fit. Um, as an example, I can give you an example of one startup uh, which which is here in Russia, which came up, who came up with the idea of monitoring people's emotions during their conversation with the client. For example, when you come to the bank and in, you talk to the representative of the bank, uh, this system monitors your emotions to see whether you are getting uh, good service. It also monitors your conversations. It converts all the conversations to, to text and tries to figure out whether you are talking about right things and uh, how well uh, certain approaches work or not. Uh, so that's one example and um, uh, this idea came to them when they heard about cognitive services first because implementing those models uh, from scratch would require much more resources, would be much more difficult than uh, using pre-trained models in the cloud. Uh, and there are, there are def definitely much, uh, many more examples. Uh, I think uh, for any business, like many businesses now, they try to uh, to do digital transformation. They try to uh, to convert many business processes to digital and cognitive services is the best place is the best place to start. And when you explore all the possibilities they offered by cognitive services, you can move to more complex um, models, custom trained models. Excellent, thank you. So what we'd like to do is just thank Dimitri for the session. Excellent content here. There's now a slide which is covering the additional resources. Um, yeah, sorry. sorry, there's a slide that's covering the additional resources. Yeah. This is just really a key slide for you. What we do ask is, can you please complete the survey for this session? So this session is cognitive services and photo exploration. It's, um, and again, we really like you to enjoy the rest of the build. And Dimitri's just got one final slide, which he'd like to share some details of his, of his apps. Yeah, it's basically uh, if you if something was not really clear, you want uh, to clarify something, you have my contact information here. And if you want to receive once in a while a new uh, picture generated by a neural network in your Instagram, you can subscribe to this Art of Artificial account and we try to post the new pictures created by AI once in a while. Thank you so much for being here and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of the build. <laughs>